Hello, I am Hayiba Salah Haldin and I am a teacher in this 10th grade English class in section 4. And I will be telling you a Nigerian story called Anati Does the Impossible. A very long time ago, when the earth was first created, all folk tales belonged to the sky god. So one day, Anati the spider said to his wife, Aso, how come the folk tales that the storytellers have been telling us for generations belong to the sky god? I'm going to try and buy them for our earth people. Aso said, do you really think you can bargain with anyone so powerful? Well, we shall see, said Anansi, and the very next day he went to the sky god. Puffing out his chest, he said, your excellency, I have come to buy your stories. The sky god beat his thunder, tun tun tun, what makes you think you can buy them? Kings have tried and failed, and you're not even a man. What? Well, well, what would you like in exchange for these stories? asked the Nazi. Sky God rubbed his chin and then finally said, I would like three impossible tasks. A live python, a real fairy, and 47 stinging hornets. I can manage that, said the Nazi. Then he hurried straight home to his wife. And Nazi told her, I have to pay a live python, a real fairy, and a 47 stinging hornets. How can I manage that? Aso thought and thought. Finally, she said, I know how we can start. And she whispered, Pesa, 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 in Anansi's ear. He chuckled, Gog, Gog, Gog. At once he ran with Aso to the river and sat on a log and waited. Presently, a python came slithering, Wasu, 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 down to the river to drink water. Anansi said in a loud voice, It is longer than he is. Not longer, shouted Aso. Maybe just as long, but not longer. The big snake raised his head. What are you two arguing about, he asked. I say the log we're sitting on is longer than you are, and Nancy answered. But my wife says it is not. Sss, hissed the python, the small thing. I know I am longer. I feel longer. Well, and Nancy said, you look shorter to me. I'll show you, said the python. He lay down on the log. Your tail is too short, said the Nazi, and rim, he gave the tail a pull. Now my nose is too short, cried the python, and he wriggled back at the end of the log. I know what to do, said Aso. Tie his tail to the other end, then he can make himself longer. And Nazi took a long bush rope and began winding it around the snake's tail and the log. Kapong, kapong, kapong. The python tried to make himself longer. He stretched and stretched. Meanwhile, Anansi kept winding until he would tie the rope all the way to the python's head. When he had the snake tied, he cried, You foolish python, you let me catch you, and now I'm going to take you to the sky god. And off he went, dragging the python behind him. When Anati gave the huge snake to the sky god, his scowl dark in the sun, he said, It is true, you have brought me the python, but you have not given me a real fairy and have not given me 47 stinging hornets. Anansi went home to Aso and said, how are we going to catch a real fairy? Aso thought and thought and finally she said, I know how. And she whispered, pesa, pesa, pesa in Anansi's ear. Anansi laughed, tweet, tweet, tweet. He carved the wooden fairy and covered it with sticky gum from a minnow, mimosa tree. Asa put a tiny dish of fufu in its hand. When the moon was bright, Anansi took the make-believe fairy to the olden tree where the fairies like to play. He tied a long string to the back of the wooden fairy and to its head. Then he hid behind some bush and bushes and clutched the end of these strings. Presently, some fairies came dancing around the old um tree. Lip, lip, lip. One of them cried in a tinkling voice, Look, here is a stranger. She has a dish of foo-foo. <clears throat> the fairy's sister smacked her lips. Ask her to give us some, she said. So the first fairy asked, Kind stranger, may you please have a taste of your fufu? Nancy pulled one string and the doll nodded. The fairy took a tiny taste. Ooh, she said, your fufu is delicious. Thank you. The wooden fairy said nothing. Look, said the first fairy. I told her thank you and she didn't reply to me. Slap her, said the sister. The first fairy hit hard. Pa! Her hand stuck. Let me go, let me go, she cried. The sister said, hit her again, that will teach her to let you go. The first fairy struck the doll with her other hand, pa, and that stuck too. 
quickly and as he pulled the strings and ran to the sky god. The little fairy screamed, "Ee!" in her little eerie voice as she dr- was being dragged away. Her sisters shrieked, "Ee ee!" as they ran after her. And as he soon outran her and then he told the little fairy, Little fairy, I'm going to take you to the sky god. When the sky god saw Nancy coming with the fairy, he, ro- he roared, How can a measly creature like you perform these impossible tasks? But then he added, I admit that I have the python and the real fairy, yet you still have not brought me the 47 stinging hornets. And as he ran home to Aso and asked, How are we going to catch 47 hornets? Aso thought and thought, finally said, I know how, and she whispered, Pesa, 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 in the Nazi's ear, and the Nazi laughed, Gee, gee, gee. As Aso had suggested, he plucked the bottle shaped gourd from his calabashi and carved a wooden cork for it. He filled it with water and then he went to a nearby hornet's nest in a bush. He climbed high in a nearby tree and he tipped the bottle and let the, wall, the water gurgle. Golder, 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 down upon the hornets. My brother, said Nancy, do you want a better shelter? See, in this calabash you will be safe and dry. He held out the empty gourd. The hornets buzzed around it, one to win, then another, then another. When Anansi counted 47 stinging hornets, he popped the cork into the gourd. Cop! Little hornets, he said, I'm going to take you to the sky god. And off he went. The sky god saw Anansi coming. At once he flashed his lightning, wee, 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 and beat his thunder, ton, ton, ton. Holding out the buzzing gourd, Anansi said, I'm here with the 47 stinging hornets. Would you like to count them? No, cried the sky god. Anansi, you have paid the price. The life python, the real fairy, and the 47 stinging hornets. From now on, the stories belong to you. Anansi thanked the sky god, then hurried home. That night, the people of the village gathered inside a circle of fires for storytelling, and Anansi told how he and Aso had managed to buy the sky god stories. Honor to Anansi, honor to Aso, honor to Anansi and Aso. And from that day to this, the folk stories of West Africa have been called Anansi Tales.